Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is June 20th, 2019, and I'm going to hand this right over to Miss Vegas. Be sure to subscribe and ring that bell. All right. Well, good evening, everyone, and what a day. Um, so we're going to talk about ADVE, CTRV, EDSA, which was a swing from yesterday, AQB, and G. So let's begin with ADBE Adobe. This was the digital media marketing software maker and they had their earnings yesterday, uh, Tuesday, and they did beat Wall Street targets for its fiscal second quarter. And the earnings sent the stock higher in extended trading. Yeah, the company is in San Jose, California. Well, they earned in the $1.83 a share on $2.74 billion for the period of uh, ending May 31st. So the analysts were expecting earnings of 1.83 a share on a, uh, sales of 2.7. Um, you know, this uh, Adobe here did really well, very strong year over year growth of 13% in earnings per share, 22% in sales. I think the analyst looks like from what I was reading for modeling the earnings, um, uh, with a different with a different number so they did certainly uh surprise the wall street analysts and uh the ceo did say um that the momentum is the explosion of creativity across the globe and widespread business transformation delivering engaging customer experiences he did also mention that um innovative technology platform exciting product roadmap and strong ecosystem of partners they are very well positioned for the second half of fiscal 2019 and beyond so i just want to make one line, um that um the, uh with investors business daily they do like this they do like this company they have a composite rating of 96 which means that it's outperformed key metrics over the last year, very important number. Uh, the other thing too is Adobe has three cloud computing businesses. They have Creative Cloud, Document Cloud, and Cloud. And the Creative Cloud is a software for professionals like that love Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign. And then the Document Cloud includes Acrobat and e-signature offering. Experience Cloud provides marketing software and services. So they got lots of stuff in the cloud. And let me tell you, the cloud's a great place to be. Um, so I want to just mention a uh, show who's in our room. And you know what? She is a very novice trader. She's been around for a bit with us, learning very nicely and slowly. But I got to say, she actually called a phenomenal earnings before the close. She asked, uh, she said that she was going to get two calls expiring this friday for the 295 strike believe it or not they were just seven cents each well guess what they're worth today any thoughts jim uh no yes what are they worth well you know what eight a contract so this is why you know as hard you know options can be difficult but I think when you have a small account, this is a really good way to try to grow things. Uh, yes, a stock into earnings, I will say. But the thing is this, her investment was the $142 because she chose to buy two contracts. Well, she turned $142 um, into $1,600. Now, I will say I did connect with her earlier and she didn't obviously hold the option call to this level. She sold sooner. Um, I'm not sure exactly the price she sold, but what I'm saying is it goes to show that an option account with a small amount of money, you can grow. You just have to, it's sometimes the right time, the right pick. I mean, they're not all going to be huge runners and that's what sometimes people think. Uh, so, you know, please don't think that, but what I'm saying is that there's good opportunities with the, with options, uh, especially when you have a smaller account. Um, we did alert uh option today because again a lot of people didn't see much action uh the next day after earnings 
and we saw action today. And what we saw today was a huge run with Adobe. And I did alert. As a matter of fact, I did alert this at 934. And I did alert the Adobe call. And it was, believe it or not, $300 strike. And who would think Adobe's going to go to... Well, I at least kind of thought, well, that looks like a cheap option. So let's try the $300 strike, which, which of course expires tomorrow. And so those were $0.08. Cent. And look where those went today. They went, the $300 calls went as high today as 3 dollars and 44 cents which is 86 dollars turning into let's say 300 dollars because you know when you're doing so well and you're up 100 percent, 200 percent, now you're up uh, honestly you're up 300 percent almost and i need to take profits you know so not everyone's gonna keep holding because that's you know i think that's kind of gambling but i mean if you have more than one call of course, you can let's say sell one, take profits, and hold the other one as a free as a free. But in this case, if you have only one call, of course you probably would have sold. So just again, the concept of a small investment turning into a very very nice return. I mean, I, I've never put eighty six dollars in the bank you can get three hundred back. So Jim, let's hear about the Adobe chart. All right, the Adobe chart. Let's pull it right up. The Adobe. So we're going to look at the yearly chart first, and if I was looking at this earlier, we were broke out of a year high on Adobe. That year high was right around here on 290, and we hit that and stopped there yesterday, which created a one-year uh, double top. Didn't pull back. It gapped up, actually. Opened up, up right around 293.14, somewhere in that area, and it's closed right now at 302.66. The analysts have a target on this. It was at 312. Now they moved it up to 327. So I'm believing, and I'm going to pull up a three-year chart just to see if we can get any higher just on. Nope, we've hit a three-year high also. So this is an all-time high for Adobe right now. So we're going to pull her down to a 20-day. And 20-day ain't going to tell me much, I don't think. It'll tell me a little bit on these two-day breakout. So if this thing pulls back any, I'm going to pull it up to a one-hour daily. And I did kind of call a pullback on it earlier today once it hit that 299.60. And it did pull back to a low right around the 295.62, 71. So that's where I'm going to put my bottom line support at. Whoops, I need to change this here. Should take me much longer. Slap that down. And I'll put that right around 295.75. So if this thing pulls back any, I'm thinking around 300, 301 at the most. And if it does go below that a little bit, it'll be 356. I'll also be running it off the 34 EMA and also the 200. So it could always touch back down to that 200 like it did today and bounced up off of it. And like it did yesterday and bounced up off of it. So the resistance we got to break is going to be this 302.53. We did have a 302.66 high. And we just have to kind of imagine old 50 cent intervals on the way up from here and I do believe we are going higher like Miss Vegas said their earnings were outstanding and their forecast is outstanding and they are into the cloud and that's a big deal so this is ADBE low support right around the 300 301 area if it pulls back to there if it pulls back anything below that it's definitely going to be 299.60 for a support area and that's going to be your bottom line support if it runs into the 200 EMA or the 34 and the resistance breakout is going to be at, at a 302.53 and the next one we're going to talk about is CTRV running after hours yes so CTRV uh, did have news today after hours and uh, the news that they did mention uh, don't have all the details but they did say that they did receive positive FDA response to their CRV431 uh, pre-IND package for NASH. So I want to mention on CTRV is also close. So that is also probably why we're seeing an act of a reaction in the market uh, with regards to CTRV is because all 
things closed. So I think, you know, investors are liking that. And, um, you know, again, it's not FDA news that they got approval for anything. Um, but they, you know, they did get some good news. Um, not an approval for any kind of drug. It's just that they did get um, the, um, the positive response from the FDA. So that's actually good. And uh, see um, what comes out of this, or I guess in the next little while on CTRV. And the other thing too, I mean, um, we're in the trade. I mean, I'm in the trade at 565. Some people got 515, 520. So holding this one overnight, and we'll see what comes out of this tomorrow. And Jim, let's hear about the chart on CTRV for those people that might be looking at this tomorrow. We got a long ways to go up on this thing. I, I don't know how many splits it's had or how many offerings it's had, but it did have a year high up here at 117.60. So we were at a bottom here just today down here at 411. And it's funny how this news comes out and these things pop. Well, we're going to pull it up. And I've got a few resistances that we got to hit here. We were playing this before, I can tell right now, in this channel area right here. So I'm going to draw me up a couple more. Just to kind of make sure, but we're going to pull this up to a 20 day chart right now and have a look at it. Right now, after hours, we're at 574. I'm going to pull up the tape here and show you how it's running. It did have a little pullback, so we did hit kind of a resistance area before the, the gap comes in, and that's going to be right here, right around 5, around 610. That's going to be our next resistance, 610. And then we'll have another one right here. I'm counting, looking at these two base of candles right here, right around the 646 area. So I'm going to pull up the daily one minute. Those are going to be our resistances. For right now, it did pull back to that 34 after it got the news after hours. It ran from a low down here at close at 429 all the way up to $6. And we almost hit that 610 resistance. It did come back and pull back and hit that 34 EMA. And it's rolled up ever since and came back and touched it again and bounced up to 574 here. That's where we sit right now. So I'm going to draw another support line right in here. I've got two of them actually. It's 554. And I'm thinking somewhere in this right down here. There we go, 538. So I'm going to be following this tomorrow. It is Friday. I think it can pull back down here to 34, and I'm also going to use this 200 EMA as a low support balance. But I do believe resistance. We had a high yesterday right here at 525, and you can see that, and it did pull back today pretty hard. This has been probably one I should have been watching earlier today with low support right down here at 410. So basically, I'm going to be following it on this 34. I'm going to call a low support now at 525. I think it will hold right there. If it doesn't, it will go down a little bit more, maybe right around this area to 504. So let's stick with 525 right now for your third support. Your second one's going to be here at 538. And then your first one is going to be right here at 554, where it pulled back just a little bit ago. The resistance to break, we need to break 580. And then have six dollars and bring it up to six ten, and let's go back and look at the other two resistances. You're welcome anytime to stop this video and copy these charts down. But I have the three next resistances that if we're going to get to, that's going to be the six ten, the six forty six, and the six sixty seven. If it catches wind, if not, it'll pull back to those other supports that I mentioned. And this is CTRV. It's a beautiful stock after hours. The next one we're going to talk about is, Miss Vegas said it was a swing, it's EDSA. Okay, so on EDSA, shout out to Rich. I mean, Rich has been on fire. This man's just so good. Um, so he did alert uh, EDSA, believe it or not, yesterday as a swing trade. And uh, what he mentioned uh, yesterday in the, in the swing trade, actually, when he mentioned EDSA, um, it was a very uncrowded trade, not a lot of alert. Um, was also because they had a 13D filing. Also, uh, Stock Authority mentioned this one. There was another 13D filing from before. Um, and that was a big 4.7%. And uh, you know what? Like this one.
from back to 389. Also, swing trade was alerted again at 440. And, and wow, what a beautiful today was a really good day with this particular stock. People woke up and we saw news on EDSA. By the way, EDSA is from Toronto and um, they had and really the news was that uh, they I guess they notified that the FDA told them they could proceed with their clinical investigation of EB01. Uh, so that was good news. They got the phase two. So, you know, sometimes even though you get FDA news, it doesn't mean it sometimes it just doesn't do much to the stock. But for some reason, the market really liked this news just because they got a. I will say again, phase two is the most expensive part of a clinical trial. So anyhow, the stock had a beautiful run and I'll let Jim talk all about that. Yes. EDSA did pull back to my low support today. I did have a low, low one, but I did call in the room here at 783 and I found another support after it pulled back a little bit more to 732. This thing did break out. We did have a previous high on this trade right at six bucks, a little bit under 685. And that's right now where the 34 EMA is plastered on a 20 day chart. So I'm going to pull up a yearly and like Miss Vegas said, the volume it's, it's, it's an uncrowded trade. You can see we had a low bottom down here at 75 cents even. And we've got three stair steps of gaps up on each one of these. And then we had that big high today of 13.56 and it really did run. I kind of thought it would pull back today, but just the fact that it's ran up so high from this 80, this one over about a dollar that it's sat back here about a month ago. So we're going to pull up the one minute daily. And this is the one I do my Drake trading on, and I really kind of fine tune things. Have low support down here at six bucks, and I'm going to add another one right here to six fifty five. So let's change that low support to six fifty five. We've got a pivot point area or first just first and second support. Well, now that we've gone under it, we're going to lower this down to six dollars for a low support, six fifty five for the second, and then we're hovering right here at the first support at 732. Now for this thing going to move on up, it's going to move on up to 783. And then we're going to have another resistance right here, right around the 740 area. And I do believe this is one that you're going to keep on watch. It's probably surprising some people because of what happened today with the big breakout and the news that it did receive. And it does have a pipeline. And the only thing I can tell you is I think it can pull back to the $6 area and then bounce on up and play in this little channel between $6 and $8.40. And if it does have the mustard, this is a real hard resistance at $8.40 and it can break on up a little higher. If not, it could also knife and pull back down to that $6 area. Right now we're sitting at $7.30 and keep a good eye on EDSA and a great call by Rich and Miss Vegas for bringing it to our attention today in the room. And the next one we're going to talk about is about salmon. I love salmon. It's AQB. Yeah, so AQB, Aqua Bounty Technology. I mean, you guys know this is the company that uh, the FDA had approved, uh, that they did approve uh, the request to produce genetically modified salmon within the U.S. And they also, um, you know, plan to initiate operations at a fish farm. But uh, AQB, I mean, this one was popping on scanners. Um, but I will say that, and we did have this one also as a swing trade. And I still like it, still bullish to me. Uh, what I really like about it is um, the last couple days, it did look to me as a pocket pivot was forming. It did also show me that the stock was poised to have an expansion breakout, which it did have. And there's still a nice pocket pivot and a nice bridge today. I still like the stock. I still like everything about it. Holding the trade. So, Jim, let's hear about the stock because this is one for people to potentially even day trade. Yeah. Because it had a nice move today. And or wing it if it performs tomorrow. So, Jim, let's hear about AQB. And we're going to pull up the yearly chart first. As you can tell, we've had a two-day breakout. It did pull back earlier this morning. And it bounced up off, off that pullback back up to resistance level which the resistance level was right here around $3.19. $3 I'm 
I'm going to pull up, if I remember right, this has had a couple of offerings already. So it's probably got the cash now. They are in the process of building, and they have been approved for some salmon. I know that for a fact. We did have a resistance up here at around 350, 347. Uh, I remember I played this on this last run we had up here. We were really excited, and it sold off real hard. And then they had the offering, and it just went on down. And she's bounced up a few times with three white soldiers and then consolidated again back down here at the bottom just last week at around a little under two bucks. So this, this is really one to keep an eye on. We're, we are at a resistance level. I would call it the first resistance up here at 315, and it needs to break on up. I've got a couple other ones. I've got one here at 331, and then it could run up here to my red line resistance where it starts getting tough at 346, and then um, that's going to be kind of like the triple top year high, but we did break that one time, make it a quadruple, and it ran all the way up to 545. So I'm going to pull up the 23-day, let me pull up the minute chart. And then I'm going to look at the 5-day real fast. Okay, this 5-day tells me what I need to know. we got a low support right down here at 266. That's where we pulled back this morning. That's what I'm going to draw into a red line at. And that's what I'm going to call as a low support, a solid support. One that can pull back and probably bounce up off that. That would be a double bottom support. So that 266, and then we've got to bring that all the way up here to the next resistance at 281. That's going to be your second support. And then your first support is going to be right here at $3. And right now we're at 321. We're at a double top here in the five-day chart. And we're going to have to break resistance, and that'll be the 345 up to the 347. And then we'll see what we can get after that. So I'm going to run these through you one more time. Low support at 266. Then we got a three dollar for your second for your first support. So right in between that, we're going to have a little channel. This 281 to 289, and I'm going to color that in, and that's going to be my second support channel that I'm going to be talking about tomorrow. I don't want it to pull back all the way down to that low support of 266. I'd rather see it stop there. So your first support is going to be right at three dollars, and then we've got these other little re places here at 310. It could pull back to that 310 and bounce. I'm going to draw that one in too, now that I see that little place right there. But right now, let's continue the breakout. Let's go up to 331 and 347 and see if we can get any higher on this trade. But it, this, the, the channel that I'm seeing right now is a beautiful little channel, channel on an upward swing. And it did pop up from yesterday from a 202 level. So that's up $1.21 already. Don't you know, I would expect it to pull back a little bit, and I'll also do the same thing. I'll run it off the 34 EMA and also the 200 EMA for a pullback support if the other trend lines don't fail. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be the last one, and it was a news alert we got right after uh, today, later on into the day, and that was PCG. Yeah, so, Jim, you know what? Can you go to the... Um... Can you go to your uh, Discord yep. there? I gave you an article on G. Yep. Uh, well, not just a, a snapshot of the news feed. So I do want to mention, so, you know, PCG, hold on one second. So PCG, you know, has had news in the past. Uh, this is the company Pacific and Electric Company, right? P G and E. Yep. Uh, but the ticker is PCG. And, you know, they've been in the news uh, you know, you know, the company's had a lot of news. Uh, did move earlier today because um, the company um, they did they reached an agreement for resolving wildfire claims, and, and it's going to make payments worth 18 different public entities as part of a Chapter 11 plan of a reorganization. Um, so that's really, really, really good news uh, for this act company and as a result moving but the reason i'm showing you guys this news feed that jim's showing you guys is look at like trade exchange how on the ball they are i mean they always give me the news feeds i keep all the historical records are here easy for me to track everything they share with me and you can see they've already been giving me the heads up of the news feed back on june 18 which was like two days ago that talk of a 
settlement in some of the wildfire. This was before the PR was released. There was social media chatter. And then they talked about it the next day that they said the local entities resolve the wildfire June 19th. And then the same day, option calls were shared of what they saw on volume. So these are not ideas for trading. They're just alerting what they're seeing as activity, unusual activity, or um, they're just a news provider and that's all they do is just give information of what they're seeing in the market. So they're like a second set of eyes for what's out there. So they shared what's happening with PCG calls, what they noted. Next thing you know, today, boom, the stock went crazy. And you know what? That PCG call for July 19, uh, Jim, yep. I just got to see if I can get it. But you know what, Jim, maybe talk, we, we saw, uh, uh, was it the $23 ones that we were talking about in the room or 22 It was 22 It was the $22 strike. We were talking about it in the room as soon as we heard this news. And they were 55 cents. Okay? Yep. They were 55 cents. Right away, people jumped on them and bought them right away. And some people hesitated because sometimes with news, you will see a pop and then a drop. Okay? okay? But in this case, we saw a pop, we, but then we saw it reverse and go up. So people did grab some calls at a higher price, I think 75 and 95 cents. But boy... That was a nice one on PCG. It was so, beautiful. You know, PC yeah, so the PCG calls the ones from July 19, uh, that trade exchange um, gave me a heads up on that they saw as unusual volume. Um, these were the $21 calls. Well, let me tell you what those are worth because they gave it to us a couple of days ago. Okay, like two days ago? Actually, yesterday. Oh, my God. You know what? They were sh When they shared that information for um those were um like like what they listed there a dollar uh what was it jim 158 thanks jim yeah and uh they went as high as three dollars so one contract boom next thing you know just beautiful so it is really important to have good news feeds good information and i have to say this trade exchange you guys heard me talk about them before phenomenal so if you ever want to check it out, you don't have to pay for it. Just come visit us in the room and you can listen to it live on voice. Uh, they have a team of people that talk and you can hear the news live. Let me tell you, it's quite the experience. Um, you're welcome to come check it out. And if you want your own feed, you can go to our website and try out a trial for $10. Uh, you can check it out for one month. And then after that, they charge $44.95. Uh, but you can try it yourself if you want for just nine ninety nine. Uh, but you have to go to my website and use code Vegas to get that special discount, or else you're gonna have to pay the price. Or come and get it for free. Come visit us, Jim. Let's hear about PCG because I think it's gonna go more because I was seeing the contracts coming in was getting juicier. Yeah, it's it, it, this I think can go higher. What I kind of liked about the news is they settled the uh, they settled it, and then the the governor's coming up with some kind of special financing to also help finance this. And that to me was a big deal. And my mistake today getting in this option was I tried to get in at the bid. The thing kept dropping I and mean, it got down to almost, I mean, this $22 bid got down to 15 cents. And I kept trying to chase that 15 and keep chasing it up and up. And then I finally just gave up. And then all of a sudden it takes off and runs up to, two dollars and fifty cents and i'm going you know what a major mistake so when something like this happens jump in there at the ask don't don't hesitate because i did wait for the pullback and and i should have jumped on that pullback right at the ask so here we're going to look at the chart now i've got this charted up we we'll charted it up from the last run we had this thing dipped down on that bad news all the way last year to five dollars and seven cents so I'm going to pull this yearly chart up right now, and then I'm going to erase. Try. I'm going to see if I, you know, we played this down here. This was last year's trend lines, these yellow ones, and then I added these other ones here when I started changing things around. And this was right at the first of the year when all this stuff happened. And it did have a huge crash from $49 all the way down to 17 and then it started trying to run up a little bit, and then later on it just went ahead and pooped out. 
went all the way down to 507. So here we are with a double triple top. We are in like a pivot point right now, right here, right where it's right where it sits, right here around 2350, 2350 is a yearly pivot point, a little bit above the pivot point, but you can see what I mean by pivot point. We have the supports here and we have the resistance here, which makes it a pivot point. So I'm going to pull up the 20 day and I use, you know, a lot of people ask, make fun of my lines, but these lines mean a lot to me. They're old resistances and old supports, and it seems like they always fall right back to them every time. It's either they fall back to them or they hit them again, and I was calling almost every trade today off my old resistance lines that I had, or my old support lines that I had before, and it was hitting them exactly, and I'll show you that. We had a call, and my last call on this thing was right here at $24, $23.96 and we hit a 23.85 high and every time up we were hitting them little trend lines so let's pull up the 20 day or the one day one minute you see what I'm talking about it, right when we got the news it took off from $21 and ran all the way up to 22 then pulled back to the 21.55 and then she just shot straight up and hit a triple hit a high pulled back again to that 34 EMA which I talk about a lot in the room I'm starting to really like these moving averages, especially on a breakout stock. If I miss the first entry, I can always get back in on the second. So we did have a double top, and then she went ahead and pulled back again and hit that again, and then failed that, that support area, but also it, it hit this double bottom right here, right at 22.42. And then we created a triple top right into close with a 23.85 high. So here we are after hours, we're at 23.56, it did close at 23.57, it's kind of a stalemate, I see it did pull back here to 23. So these are going to be the supports that I'm going to call, I'm going to call this 22.42 right here, I'm going to turn that into a red line, that's going to be your first, your support in a way, I'll tell you which one it is here in a second, after I get this all drawn up. Then your next one's going to be right down here, right around the $22 area. So I'm going to switch that also into a red line and make it very easy for us. So when I come in here tomorrow, I know what I'll be looking at. And then a low support down here at 2155. So I've got three supports that I'm going to work with. That's going to be the 2155. That's going to be your low, low, low. 2199 is going to be your third. Your second is going to be right here at 2242. And then your first one. Is going to be somewhere in this area, and I'm going to call it right here at $23. $23. We are at $23.12 right now. And also going to use the two moving averages on a daily one minute, the 200 EMA, and also the 34. The resistance we got to break is this quadruple top, or even more, here at 23. Let's adjust it to 23.68, 23.67 is going to be the hard resistance that we got to break and I need to, well it should have worked so thing is here 2367 that's where I'm going to have that first resistance breakout the second one's going to be the $24 area 2396 and then if she wants to keep on moving which I love that word next one's going to be right up in here right around the 2458 and she can run up a lot higher, I mean, if this thing starts to settle. But from past experience, I do think it can pull back a little bit. And I see that we did have a top up here at 21.25 for a very low, low support. And that's what we're going to count on. So that concludes the aftermarket report. It's always good to, when you see these breakouts, open up your options folder and look into that. I'm not very experienced at it, but Vegas is getting, getting to be our mentor here in the room when it comes to options trading. So we'd appreciate it if you would go ahead and check our website out. If you want to join the room, we have the chat service right here where you can sign up. You get a free trial. Girls get in here for a month for free if you let Vegas know, and she'll put you in for a month. Also, we have our Twitter page right here where you can sign up, hit the follow button. Miss Vegas puts alerts in here on a daily basis of stocks we're watching if she has time. We also have two stock twit pages which we really admire. We, we like to post in stock twits also. So this is the aftermarket report and I'm going to let Miss Vegas finish it up. Okay well you know what 
I just want to say that it was a really great day today and uh, can't do any of what we do without the people in the room and the team that we have. Um, you know, really, this team is just so good. Everyone's so helpful and so many different like kinds of traders in here that I like. I'm getting to know like more of the um, users in the room. I mean, so many people like to only want swing trades. Some people only want options. Some people just want options but only anything under a dollar because maybe they want to get more options or they have a smaller account i mean just really nice group of people that with all different kinds of trading backgrounds so i mean you know depending on what you like you'll definitely meet so many great people here so you know trading can be lonely so if you're trading on your own why be alone when you can trade with a nice team so come on by and visit thank you for listening appreciate everyone's time Please like, please follow, please subscribe, and uh, look forward to talking to you guys again. We'll be definitely doing another episode on Sunday to prepare you for the week, but I'm also going to do an episode about how we can help you find your own trades, and we will do a little uh, educational video separate from the watch list, and we're going to start doing an educational video series um, starting uh next week so stay tuned for that because a lot of people sometimes um want to learn different styles and different things so we're going to start doing educational videos as well to help because really it's what we want to do is help people so thank you so much everyone have an amazing night and talk to you sunday this is the aftermarket report with vegas and jim today's date is june 20th 2019 and we love stocks <laughs>